Listen, man, you already know we had to get in on this one. It wouldn't be right if we didn't. So before we get off into it, just in case anybody isn't up on game, we just did the video on Iori Miyamoto, that being Musashi's son, kind of just outlining where his character ended up by the end of the story. Turns out, Iori is on the Kirei side of the game. If he helps people, that's cool. If he doesn't help people, that's also completely fine with him. But his allegiance primarily is to the Blade and the Blade only. So much so that by the end of the story, he was willing to use the Grail to bring the world chaos just so he could fight better enemies. So that's where we end up now. Only a few months after his character has been introduced and he's already been put into FGO. Dream come true. Now we get to test everything that he He's been talking about and there has been a plethora of memes that have surfaced around his name calling him goku and whatnot that's where the pictures come from because he's pretty much on that same type of timing and honestly they just keep getting funnier by the day but the main thing here is this list of servants that iori should quote unquote face against and i went through it and i counted this comes out to around 175 servants easily one of the craziest videos we've done so we're going to go through the list and and I'm gonna give my perspective on who I think he could take down. Not who he would, because there is a difference, who he could hypothetically. Not gonna get every single one of them, but I am gonna get some from every class and the ones that people probably wanna see the most. So for the first person, we're starting off heavy, getting straight into it, we got Artoria. Saber, we already know from Stay Night itself that Saber had issues with Subume Geishi when she first met up against Sasaki. Considering that this would be her first time fighting Eeyore so she doesn't know what he has going and his Tsubume Geishi transcends Sasuke's that means that she would also lose to him as well nothing that Avalon can do to stop that and even if it could she has no idea that it's coming so that's an easy bait despite the way it may look and by the way this is gonna clear the air of if you're stronger than somebody it's just an automatic win because I see that too much and we all know that's not true next up we got Salter same thing as Artoria but even worse she's dealing with the same parameters if he gets in range she's cooked even less of a defense than artoria next he has gawain now gawain i will say considering the way that his phantasm works whether or not he's in the sun doesn't really matter because he's hitting everything that's around him so while he would be a lot more difficult for iori to get in on that doesn't make him invulnerable to his attacks and that especially wouldn't stop his phantasm if iori closes in on him he's still gonna lose it's just the idea of him getting in on Gawain in the first place. Siegfried. Now this is an interesting one because I just recently changed my opinion a bit on this. We all know that Siegfried has the location buff where he primarily takes his main damage in his back. You hit him in his back, he dies thanks to his background. Other than that, anything lower than a B rank, he's negating. And even if it's an A rank, the damage is going to be minimized. So kind of like Krona. Now we know that Iori in particular doesn't have a blast or anything like that so he can't just completely eradicate Siegfried's body and get rid of him that way but one thing about swordsmanship and the way that it works is that even if you are a regular swordsman you can hit somebody in the back through the front right so that's just considering if Iori were a normal swordsman by law from his background we know that he has now transcended Musashi and Sasaki put together so he is one of the best swordsmen in the series if not the best on paper so if he gets in on Siegfried, there's nothing stopping him from blazing him but Siegfried's skill. But he definitely could kill him. Mordred, same thing. Same issue as the Artorias, but even worse, she has no defensive maneuver other than moving around a lot. That's all she has. Mana burst all over the place. If she allows him to get in and get it off, she dies. Bedivere, same thing. He's a glass cannon. He has Excalibur attached to him. He's never been known for defense. If Yori gets in on him, he's getting smoked. Now, Altera might be one of the first and one of the only servants that should actually pose as a real threat to Iori. Under the circumstances and the ones that I'm giving are realistic and not just some bait story tactic, he shouldn't be able to get in on Altera. Considering what we know about her background between FGO and Extella, so I'll give her that one. Rama, again, we already know about the presence of Rama despite his lack of feats and how good he should be. When we first ran into Rama in the story, what happened? 
He had majority of his heart destroyed and still survived. That's on top of Ku being a top servant. That's on top of him being an altar. That's on top of him holding a grail and still couldn't kill Rama. And when Ku found him, he was more concerned about his wife than anything. Swap Ku out for Iori and consider the fact that Rama isn't holding back. He has his blessed martial arts, so he's good in every weapon. And one of the biggest things is that Rama is a lawful spirit. And if you've seen Iori's ending, you know how huge that is. That's the reason that Iori lost to Yamato canonically because he was a spirit that understood people and Rama is just one of those spirits. So I got to give this one to Rama and not only that, but anybody else that has the same type of temperament as him and Yamato could also stand to give Iori some trouble. That doesn't even include his Brahmastra where he doesn't even have to get close. Lancelot, one of the best knights of the round, even considering that just from Camelot alone that Arash was able to survive against him and at close range Iori is even more devastating than Arash. Considering that this is Lancelot's saber form, he's gonna be head up. This would be really bad for him. Gotta give it to Iori. Shiki. I know y'all couldn't wait to hear this one. Shiki, and specifically Void Shiki at that. So here's the thing about Void Shiki. We know how powerful she is out of fate, right? But she doesn't necessarily have anything within it to back herself up. If I'm going by what I know, she shouldn't allow Iori to get in on her by any means. But at the same time, this is fate. She is in a servant container and she doesn't stand beyond the rules. She has nothing in her kit that defensively would stop Super Megashi Plus, except her mystic eyes. Given her position in the story, she could cut through Super May by just using her mystic eyes. The problem then becomes the activation. Considering the fact that this is her void version, if we were to take her clairvoyance into account, the only thing that he would have up on her is that she did didn't know what was coming. But if she uses clairvoyance, even though he technically outskills her in swordsmanship, that should be enough to at the very least keep her alive. That doesn't even include the fact that we know Shiki diced 99 servants in Fate Extra by the time that we found her. And that was in her base form without her sword. Iori is just another dead body. Arthur, King Arthur, prototype Arthur. I will give him the benefit of the doubt considering that he didn't have to go against Sasuke like Artoria did, but at the same time, you could also say that this is something that works against him. He hasn't had to deal with anything on that scale from somebody of this level, unless it was a Monica or a Beast, for instance. And we know in those cases, he had to get loaned assistance in story of prototype. Hell, even when he went against Ozzy, he had help from Arash. So you let Iori get in on him. Iori is doing the same thing to Arthur that he's doing to Artoria. It's a white. Suzuka goes in. This is actually one of Sasuke's first formidable foes because Suzuka has projectiles. That will be the bread and butter of one of the biggest issues that Iori has to deal with when going against any of these opponents. And that's been made very clear with people like Sasuke when he had to go against Gil. Not saying that Iori is Sasuke, but as powerful as he may be on the offense, he doesn't extend that much more than that. Suzuka, on the other hand, she has telekinesis. Her phantasm allows her to spray hundreds of swords at one time, Iori is not stopping that if she gets it off. But if she doesn't do the phantasm, if she doesn't do her projectiles, he's baking her. Sigurd. Sigurd is supposed to be all around a better character than Iori. He has Grom, one of the best swords there is. On a defense level, Grom and his projectiles will be the only thing that will protect him. And this is really more so of an exposed video more than anything, in case you guys can't already see yet. A lot of these guys are strong but they're glass cannon they're strong to a fault or they're strong without having anything else going on and it's not always about strength if he already gets in on this man he's done Benny Enma. This is kind of funny because it's sort of a mirror match. So Benny actually has Suzume Geishi, which is a very similar technique, never said to be quite true magic level, but still in that same realm. Again, when it comes to her kit, everything is offensively based. Her star basket, her wicker basket. Can she beat Iori? Of course. But if he gets in on her, she still dies, despite her being an Oni. So she has additional metrics, a lot like Altera and Suzuka. Still doesn't help her. The deal scurry twins honestly this shouldn't even be fair it's two on one but that's the way that they come so that's the way that we got to run it anyway this would also be another matchup that would pose as a problem for iori because under no realistic circumstance even if he takes down one the other should always be there to clean him up 
every single time unless by a stroke of a rainbow in the sky he hits them both at once that's coupled with the fact that they're divine that's coupled with the fact that they're also very seasoned fighters being trained by the likes of Kyron. so i gotta give them that one rolling you already know what it is with rolling he has durandal shouldn't be too much that needs to be said after that he has his horn that he can use to cause disruption in the way that iori fights but more important than anything this is another thing that will be real important against iori projectiles distractions and optimal defense roland has his diamond body his weakness is in the soles of his feet the problem with this is this assumes that he's going against a regular swordsman and not a swordsman with a true magic level ability so though it should be the only way he should beat roland iori still could clear him if he gets the phantasm off and that doesn't change the fact that it would still be one of his harder fights ibuki we already know considering her role in the story what that should be and she has the divine kusanagi the same sword that yamato has the same sword that he lost against when he went against yamato and samurai remnant so this is one of those few matchups that she should have the upper hand on that's also considering the fact of her skill set she doesn't even necessarily have to get close to him in the first place i gotta give it to her muramasa and this is in his saber class in particular so nothing that's necessarily out of the ordinary here this is a fight that's a lot more interesting because we know what muramasa is capable of from lb6 with him taking on fairy knight tristan and Gawain, but that's stopping when he hit lancelot very interesting perspective because given that his sword is one that can cut through concepts even if iori was able to get off his super megashi muramasa should be able to still cut through that the problem comes in with the output of these moves considering that his blade is effectively a reality marble it's gonna take a nice bit of time to cast while Subamay Geishi, as we all know is pretty much instantaneous so in a matter of speed he couldn't save himself before iori still kills him and even if this wasn't the case he has nothing on his defense to stop Subamay. on the flip side he does have his eye of karma which is essentially clairvoyance so this goes a bit further than instinct one of the only things that should be able to kill him but now he pretty much has an idea that is coming and that's really iori's main bread and butter so if we say that muramasa's eye of karma works the way that it's supposed to iori shouldn't be able to get that off that being said gotta give that one to muramasa that was easily one of the best fights so far and remember muramasa is also an ascended spirit he's a pseudo servant with a sword that can literally cut through concepts in a skill that gives him clairvoyance just to give you an idea of what it's taking to even entertain the idea of silencing iori these people have no idea they're making jokes about it but it's really not a joke he's really folding a lot of these people on here fairy knight gawain if we consider what happened to all the people that she went up against it's looking very in her favor she has numeral of the saint just like gawain but i'm not even gonna consider that i'm gonna consider it at a baseline if you consider the black dog aspect in the case that she's able to go all the way out in the same way that yori is she should absolutely crush him in theory literally had to jump her to really even be considered contest that's pretty tanky considering that yori himself is also offensive base so it kind of flips here but he's not only offense because he also has defensive stances namely he's got his voice stance and if you know his voice stance is just as broken as you would expect it to be if that works in his favor prior to her going black dog she will die i will say this considering the fact that bar guest would go black dog off the bat i will at the very least give her a tie but he cannot allow that to happen for his win we got charlotte main coming in with his joy use despite his incredible power overall great swordsmanship his kit itself isn't anything extraordinary definitely isn't something that would stop iori if he can't get off his main noble phantasm his holy knight emperor is something that works well against demonic attacks and divinity but iori is working with neither it's pure skill so his best asset wouldn't really help him here iori can still come out on top gotta give iori that one emia and this is where it starts to get into the portions where it gets a lot harder for iori considering his ub dub his experience his projections in most cases emia should be able to box iori out if he fends him off a lot like he did when he fought kukulin caster iori shouldn't even get close to him 
Gilgamesh, same thing. That far casting element is gonna put Iori in a box, okay? Now don't get it twisted. This isn't to say that Iori has no defenses because he does have defensive stances. He does have his void, but that's not anything that's gonna do him justice here. And when it comes to Gil, this man is responding to lightning speed attacks from Heracles from across the city without looking with his knuckles, okay? Iori's not even getting close to him. Great example would be his fight with Heracles. Heracles, phenomenal fighter up close. As a berserker, couldn't even get close to Gilgamesh. Richard, another great example. We love to gas up how good Richard looked because we know that he's weaker than Gil. And I love Richard, but that entire fight was just him trying to get close to Gilgamesh. And he still lost. Same issue here. Gotta give it to Gil. Arjuna. Now the interesting thing that Arjuna has going on is not just the fact that he's an archer so Iori would have to close in on him in the first place, but he has Pashupata. He will literally send Iori to another dimension and Iori has nothing that he can do about it. Gotta give it to Juna. Chiron. Now this is an interesting one because as we very apparently seen with the fights that went down in Apocrypha, as strong as Chiron is, whether that be close up or far away, Way, it is controllable if we take the arrows that he was shooting at Achilles for instance Achilles being a season fighter himself could still react to him he could still knock them down still had enough time to get out the way as long as he knew that they were coming same thing with Mordred literally was knocking his arrows down while she was running up the side of a building so unless he gets off his phantasm beforehand which wouldn't be the case most of the time because he would obviously be having that in the back as reserves he already is gonna come out on top once he's finally able to get to him. Orion. Once again, I've already given a lot of my thoughts on Orion, especially considering his role in the story when he was a grand. By condition of the story, he shouldn't allow Iori to get in if you give him a proper kit. Dorga. And I kind of want to clear the air about this now too. My guys already know I'm primarily an NA channel, so for the JP servants, I can't really speak on that. I'll let you guys handle that, but if I were to speculate from what I do know about her, she also shouldn't allow him to get in and that goes for people like her Tez and even Kukulkin all of that falls under the same umbrella I would give it to them Kukulin what a fight would that be if Kukulin actually wasn't held back so we know that he has his 12 hours against Gilgamesh this is his base form on a defensive scale he has very high survivability but we've never seen him deal with something that's true magic level this is only in regards to surviving normal attacks or high level attacks even. Something like what Iori has would pose as a real bad problem for him. However, we do know that he was ready and willing to use his gay bulk right off the bat against Emiya the moment that he started to get threatened. Same thing with Saber. All of that is canonical. So unlike a lot of servants who's just gonna sit around and wait for themselves to be beaten, we know for a fact that the moment Iori starts to seem like an issue, he's gonna hit him with the gay bulk. And he can do gay bulk seven times in a row. Karna. This really should go without saying. Brahmastra, the high level defense, nudging all of the hits that he takes down to 10% on top of him being one of the best fighters in the verse. Honestly, even with a territorial buff, Vlad still couldn't outright kill him. He doesn't even need Vasavi Shakti to get this done. Gotta give it to Karna. Enkidu, same issue. Fought three days in a row against Gilgamesh. Doesn't necessarily have to get close to Iori at all. Strange Fake is still on ongoing so I've never seen Enkidu die in story under a realistic circumstance and if we were to take his fight with Gil into account then it's somebody of Gil level so I can't even give him a loss he comes out he gets threatened Enuma Elish Yori is done Skahawk now we know given her position in the story and the fact that she can use her gate to move around she's kind of going to be in the same pocket as Kukulin where she's going to prove more difficult to defeat then you got to throw in the fact that she taught Ku in the first place so she has gay bulks too there's nothing that iori can do with something like that that's conceptual on that level no matter how good he is offensively it's not going to help him here hector normally i wouldn't even put him on the list but he is a great fighter and i'm sure people may come to wonder
Saber. Again, it all goes back into a lot about what I was saying with the Saber Servants. Yes, he's a great fighter, but what is the durability looking like? What is his kit looking like? Because he is vanilla and just looking at it, it isn't that great. But I will pose something very important for him. One being the fact that he wields Durandal. That's where we start. Then there's the fact that he has Disengage. And that's something that I didn't even bring up with Ku. The Disengage skill isn't necessarily clairvoyance, but it forewarns you that you're at a disadvantage and allows you to escape. So even if he were to close in on Iori, in the moment that he finds out that he's better at him at close range, he's going to disengage and he's going to snipe him with Durandal. So Hector would come out with that win. Lancer, Artoria, and the Altar, given the idea that she can fight close range, you would think that it would be a lot like Artoria, but more often than not, now that she has her steed, she would more than likely test the waters first to see what he has going on. And once she understands that close range wouldn't be something that would do her anything proper, she would just continue to create distance and hit him with the Rongo Minion. Canis. We know how formidable Canis is in the story. Even outside of the chapter of LB5, she remains extremely powerful. Even if she doesn't have territorial advantage, where she becomes even worse, she still remains a top class servant. She's pretty much a vessel for Poseidon at this point. So fighting her is like fighting Poseidon himself. I will admit, knowing the way that Canis fights, she would definitely be one to get in close range on Iori. But I also feel like she's so overwhelmingly powerful powerful up close that under most circumstances she would end up dismembering him. Grand Romulus really is a shame the lack of exhibition we have from this character in the story but we do know he is a servant with telekinesis. He doesn't have to get close to Iori and for the most part he doesn't fight up close anyway. If he decides to play around and get in close on Iori he will literally incinerate him with his bare hands or if he decides to not get close at all he can hit him with his phantasm and turn him into actual butter. Fairy Knight Lancelot. A lot of this works against Iori's favor. She has extremely high durability. She can fly. Even when she was getting jumped in the story, it didn't help. And this is before you get to her Albion variant. In a one-on-one, -on -one, Iori can only hope that she doesn't transform. Iskander. This is another one that I would normally never put on the list. But what poses as a real threat to Iori is Iskander's bulls. And the fact that he has his reality marble, which throughout the entirety of the time would keep him out of range of Iori's attacks. Could Iori kill Iskander? Of course. But in most bouts, in most case scenarios, Iskander wouldn't even allow him to get in just given the type of kit that he has. So I'm gonna give him that one. Ozzy, even if we just completely ignore his Ramazim, Ozzy literally has beams that can pinpoint you overhead and incinerate you before you realize that they're even there. We could entertain the idea that Iori is gonna get through that, but in most cases, Cases. Come on, man. Kets. We've already seen how Kets was coming. Majority of that being from the Babylonia chapter, from the time that she entered the story, even when she was playing around, she can be considered as a deadly threat. She's got her pterodactyls, so she doesn't have to necessarily fight him close range if she doesn't want to, but we all know how Kets loves to fight. She loves to get in on the inside. Hell, she went head to head with a beast at close range. She does not care. And Iori isn't anywhere close to beast level in my mind i can only imagine her smearing his body all over the walls just from wrestling moves ivan though he often doesn't get brung up much in conversation he's a great unit iori could take him down potentially but the problem is the defense he's not going to get past his mammoth and even if he could have he's got his oppression that could serve as a great distraction while iori tries to figure out a way to get close to him in the first place it's just too much it's overwhelming gotta give it to ivan Emiya Assassin and even his son Emiya Alter. I wasn't even gonna bring Emiya Alter into this, but I do want to make it known that I don't think either of their kits stand to be anything threatening to Iori specifically. Even though Emiya has a gun, I don't know if you've seen Iori's speed, but his speed and his stances go beyond normal space time. So for anybody thinking, oh, he's got a gun, that's an automatic win, you're lost. I seen somebody entertaining the idea that Billy could beat him because he has a gun. Huh? 
ah, you're funny. Iori would run through all three of these people, okay? Hell, in LB1, Billy couldn't even hit Musashi with his bullets. Be serious. Not only can he block bullets with his sword, and yes, he can do that because Musashi can do that, and he's better than Musashi. He doesn't even have to because he's gonna speed right past the shots. King Hassan, former Grand Assassin. Does Iori stand up to the old man of the mountain himself? We already know what King Hassan did to Gawain. We already know what King Hassan did to Ozzy. We had him out here fighting the Whore of Babylon. Everybody knows that he is not a name to be played with. But what about his kit, actually? Well, there comes the issue of the sandstorm. Then it isn't so much in his park, and it just turns into another Ozzy situation, where Hassan is just waiting for the right moment, and then he ices Iori. I do think that Iori can kill King Hassan, but in most cases, King Hassan would never let that happen, so I gotta give him the win. Not only that, but I've never seen King Hassan die. Every time they stop showing him, he just leaves. I haven't even seen him die, let alone trying to give the win to Iori. Next, we have Izo, Ushiwakamaru, and Lee Shuen, all of which being people that I would consider very formidable up close, extremely seasoned fighters. Is this season enough to deal with Iori once he pulls out his true magic level hits? No. No, it's not. And considering the fact that they're all glass cannons, and that's pretty much everything that they have going for them, other than speed, which he could easily match them on, he's going to get rid of them. Heracles, in his berserker form. So here's the thing about Hurt. It should be very obvious that Iori can take down Hurt at least once. But the problem comes in with Hurt's buffs. How is he going to take him down multiple times? How is Hurt going to allow him to take him down multiple times? And also, we've never seen Subame Yeshi be equated to this extraordinary beam where all of his lives get taken all at once. That's never happened. So because of that, I gotta give Herc the win just for the sheer number of lives that he has. As a matter of fact, it would probably end up a lot like Emya. Very well fought, hard up battle, and he just goes down because there's too many lives to go against. He's exhausted and he runs out of ways to get through them. Lancelot, once again. Now here, things become a lot different from his saber form because we all know that Lancelot uses literally anything that's in his presence so considering whatever is around him considering how good he is with weaponry in general it will become a lot like the situation where he fought against Gil I mean for all we know he could take over a car and just run Iori over okay realistically Iori wouldn't allow that to happen but I'm just saying he doesn't have to get close to Iori if he doesn't want to if we consider his Gatling gun and we've seen the fact that Artoria was able to dodge Lancelot's bullets while they were being reinforced knowing how fast Iori is very likely that he would do the exact same thing so you know what this is one of the very few that I will give a tie because the cases is too circumstantial to what's around them and what Lancelot ends up having in his possession but if you have to ask yes he can kill Lancelot still in this form there's nothing that's stopping him from doing that it's just a matter of how and when Ku Alter Ku Alter even without his grail has been shown to be extremely tanky and Iori's only been bet is to get in on him close range. By the way, I know a lot of people probably are wondering why I'm not bringing up Iori's spells, and that's because they are moot in most circumstances. That's the main reason I haven't brought up his spells or his stances that much, because at least in my eyes, they're not really doing anything to somebody formidable unless the circumstances are just absolutely perfect. Like for example, if he tries to use that shit on Ku Alter, it might just bounce off his chest and he'll laugh. So yeah, if you're wondering why I haven't brought that up not too much he can do with that there once again I will give it to Ku just because we know how strong Ku was and just how much it took for him to be taken down in the story had Skyhawk running slump Rama it was bad I know he had the grail at the time but still doesn't change the fact that it's Ku still doesn't change the fact that Yori has to box it up close and he has armor that's situated for that I don't see him doing it Raiko this is funny especially when you consider Ushi goes in big being in Samurai Remnant itself. If this were Ushi Gozen, it would be a different conversation. But since this is the OG Raiko from Onigashima, or even if you consider the Raiko from Remnant, where she was a sword master, if Yori gets in on her, she's getting waxed. Now we do know that she does have a bow. It's not gonna do much for her, but serve as a distraction against him. But we do know that she has that. And even then, between speed, between skill, and his stances, I'm giving him that one for certain. MHX 
Alta. And this pretty much goes for her counterpart and her other variations as well. As I mentioned before, she stands as just a better form of Artoria in pretty much every way. Most importantly, she has flight on her side and she can just speed Blissiori and slice him in half. All of them really. There's really nothing that he can do about that, unfortunately. If I were to throw him a bone, he maybe could get extremely lucky and wait for her to zoom in and then chop them down the moment that they get close. But the likelihood of that happening is realistically just rare occasion. So I'll give those fights to them. Arjuna Alta. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. And I know I'm gonna upset a lot of people when I say this. Iori would beat Arjuna Alta. Now hear me out. Hear me out. No, I'm, I'm just bullshitting. I'm just bullshitting. I'm not that delusional. I don't know what you guys thought this was. Arjuna Alta would literally just look at Iori and blow him up. This is not that type of party. I'm not even finna entertain the idea of this fight. There's nothing that he can do unless the Arthur was on his side and just made Arjuna an idiot. Unfortunately for him, I'm not letting it go down. So I will give it to God Juna here. King Protea. And this is funny because I actually seen somebody do some artwork when people started to hear how Iori wanted to scrap with all of Caldera. Yeah. In a fight against King Protea, and if you guys remember everything that we had to go through in the story to go against King Protea, that should be more than enough to convince you there is nothing that's going down. If you consider Fate Extra CCC Foxtail, if you consider her status as a high servant and her divinity, it's not just because she's bigger than him. I want people to get that idea out of their head just because somebody's bigger than you doesn't mean that you're going to lose. I would have entertained the idea of him running up Ivan's mammoth if there were weren't so many things going on already. This doesn't even include what she has going on in JP. Even with her growth spurts, it would be a lot like an RPG where if we could see Iori make the climb on her character and use her size against her, he could reach her core and take her down. And not only that, but she's been shown to be beaten by people smaller than her, like Passion for example. If he could, definitely can. Would he in most circumstances? Probably not. Bazet as a pseudo servant definitely stands to be an issue considering her long range water based attacks where she can send out her horse and straight up bliss Iori long range before he even gets the chance to understand her character he already would have been folded this doesn't include her runes doesn't include her frog rock which in the case that he does decide to use super megashi it will more than likely end up in just a double ko because they're both conceptual in the same way that it happened when she fought against ku and hollow ataraxia so Surprisingly, depending on how the fights go, I'll give this one a tie. Edmund, one of the fastest servants out there. We have his Chateau Deef, as well as his flames that are ready to incinerate Iori. We've already seen him beat Roa, and we know that he's just as deadly on a conceptual level, and Edmund was still able to deal with it. That's even considering that Edmund gets close to Iori in the first place. So in most cases, gotta get this to Edmund, there's just no way. Jalter. Now, even though Jalter was in Samurai Remnant, it's kind of unfair due to the sheer lack of one on one interactions that we've seen between these two characters. Even when Jalter did fight, she was fighting against Yamato for the most part. And also, considering her role in the story, she literally was written to survive to the end. So there really was no case that Iori could beat her because she still had to tell her side of the narrative. Could Iori kill her if he gets in on her close? Absolutely. But would Jalter allow that, especially in her Avenger form, I highly doubt it. Space Ishtar kind of runs the same circuit as God Juna. Overwhelmingly powerful, there should be no way on God's green earth that Iori should be able to take her down, right? And honestly, I don't think he can. <laughs> you thought I was going to circle back around with something else? No, he will get smacked. That's pretty much the gist. Got to give that to Ishtar. It's not even a discussion. Archetype Earth, Draco, same thing. Considering how powerful we already know them to be, conceptually, they may even stand hits from Super Megashi, if I'm being completely honest. I mean, Arcaway in her base form, literally got cut up into pieces and just snapped back and revived herself. So consider her at full power, Super Megashi just might bounce off of her. So that's the gauntlet. That's what I'm running with. I do wanna say anybody that I didn't mention, either I didn't feel like they were worth mentioning or it's so obvious that it doesn't really even need an explanation. However you wanna compare that matchup in your head. He definitely got through way more than I would've thought just looking at it. I don't think people know how impressive this is for him because all these other people, they're ascended, they're different species, they're deities, and this is just a man coming 
again with his sword and pure skill. Pretty standard kit, most of which isn't even accessible to him to begin with because the people that he's going against are busted. So the fact that he's able to go this far against people that are supposed to be better than him, that just makes him look more powerful when you think about it. And there are conversations about, you know, how he beat Musashi and where does he stand in the FGO timeline in comparison to the original because we do know how strong a human can get but we also know that Iori is now a servant so in theory considering that he beat Musashi as a human he should be even stronger than he was in the remnant timelines but we don't necessarily know that for certain just putting that into the air still crazy no matter how you slice it